A couple years ago, I covered the worst WWE Elite figure in every single series from Elite Series 1 through 50. And then just the other day, I finally covered Series 51 through 100. Well, then I got a bunch of comments saying, you need to do the best figure in every single Elite Series 1 through 50. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to dive into every single Elite Series from WWE and Mattel, starting with WWE Elite Series 1 and go all the way through Elite Series 50. And I'm going to give you the best WWE Elite in each individual series. Now, in some of these sets, it was pretty tough. Not going to lie to you and I'll cover that when we go through it but you guys know I love rankings I love to dive into the best and worst of these figures so today man we're gonna talk about it let's get into it let's start things off with WWE Elite Series 1 and talk about the best figure in each Elite set all the way up to Elite Series 50 I bet you'll be shocked at some of these results sound off down in the comment section so starting off with Elite Series 1 this was kind of tough but I did go with Elite 1 MVP it's a very very strong figure this figure holds up to this day it's a very good one in Elite Series 1 there's a bit of a rough shot of figure and it came down to Punk and MVP, but this MVP was just too good, man. It was just too good. I think it beats out the Punk just slightly, and the rest of Elite Series 1 is kind of, eh, it's not the best of all time, man. In Elite Series 2, I felt that it was also kind of tough, but I did end up ultimately going with Batista. It's a very strong figure, and a lot of people like that referee shirt that it came with, but it's a really good Batista that you can mix eras with. Elite Series 3 may be crazy, but I went with Christian, man. You go back and look at Elite Series 3. I mean, look at this jumpsuit, man. Way ahead of its time. This is 20 this is 2010 we're talking about, man. Look at this figure in its entirety. Great jumpsuit. You got to go with this Christian figure for Elite 3. Elite Series 4 is a very, very strong wave, but I think a lot of people, most people will agree that Elite 4 John Morrison stands the test of time. It's such a good figure. It has this great robe and entrance fur coat. It's got the sunglasses. Finley from this wave is good. Came from this wave is good, but I did go with John Morrison. I think that it's so good, and it has a variant that's also cool. Elite Series 5, I went with Chavo. It's not just because it's a very rare figure. It's the only Chavo Elite they ever made, but with the headband and the poncho, this figure is immaculate. It's actually a very hard figure to find in good condition because it's so old, but this is a very strong figure. I wish that we could get more Chavos. I doubt that we'll ever see Chavo again in the Mattel line. You never know, but this is a very strong figure. Elite Series 6, I went with JTG. Another really really strong set. CM Punk was good. Batista was good. Shad was good. JTG though so many unique sculpts. He has a really a really cool amount of accessories. This figure is awesome. Just a great figure overall. I really wish we could get more figures of Crime Time. Elite Series 7. I did go with Shawn Michaels. Now this set's not the greatest of all time and I almost went with David Hart Smith all things considered when you look at it all but I think that this one is the best. I know this is the From the Vault re-release but it's essentially the exact same figure and I don't like going with re-releases or figures that's been re-released. That is sort of one of my strong suits, but I felt like the Elite 7 HBK was one that I could not leave off in this instance. Given the accessories, the look, the camo pants, I went with Elite 7 Shawn Michaels. Elite Series 8 is another really strong wave, but I did go with Evan Bourne at the end of the day. William Regal from this wave is amazing. I like the Edge, the Drew McIntyre. This is a very strong wave as well, but I did go with Evan Bourne. Some really cool accessories, very cool posability, and a really great attire. Elite Series 9, I went with MVP again. Again, it's actually an upgrade from Elite Series 1, in my opinion. I love the sleeve tattoos. The gloves are great. Really good details. And Elite Series 9 is also a pretty good wave overall. Elite Series 10, I went with Yoshi Tatsu. And I felt like the paint apps were so cool in this figure. He has the armbands that are really cool. And it's not the most, you know, the craziest figure of all time. But I thought that it, it got the nod over a couple other figures. Elite 11, we have CM Punk. And I just really am fond of this CM Punk for whatever reason. Elite 11 is not the greatest wave of all time. It's got some hits here and there. The Miz from this wave is pretty good, but I went with the Punk. I just like this gear a lot, and I think that the t-shirt was cool, the Nexus armband. It's a pretty underrated Elite CM Punk, all things considered. Elite 12, I shish you not, I almost went with Papa Shango. I really did. I almost went with Papa Shango, but we did get him again in that two-pack with Ultimate Warrior, and we have seen so many re-releases of Kane, but I don't think you can talk about Elite 12 without mentioning Kane and the importance of this figure when it was released. This figure was so sought after back in the day, man. I mean, it's unbelievable how many times we've gotten a similar look of this, but Elite 12 Kane had to be the pick. Elite 13, I went with Dolph Ziggler. This wave overall is not very good when you go back and look at it. Dolph Ziggler, though, is the best figure in this wave. He poses around pretty good. I don't like the large knee pads. Comes with the world title, but it's a pretty good representation of Dolph Ziggler. And for the time, I think it was a pretty strong head sculpt. I like this Dolph Ziggler. I think it's the best figure in Elite 13. Elite 14, it is John Cena. Now, John Cena is so good in the main Elite line because he comes with a t-shirt. He's got the armbands. He comes with a hat. He's got the dog tags. He's got a lot of really good things. So when they miss, 
miss, they miss, but when they hit, they hit, and this John Cena is an iconic attire. I know it has the John Cena shoe mold that would live on for 25 years after this, but this is a really good figure. The light jeans are really what make this figure. And a really good head sculpt for the time. Elite 15 is Sin Cara, man. And Sin Cara, man, I could do a whole damn deep dive on Sin Cara, man. His figures are unbelievable. You're talking about a great mask, a great formula, great posability, great colorations. This guy is unbelievable. He has such a good track record of elites. You know how we always talk about people batting a thousand? Sin Cara possibly bats a thousand, man. The guy is so damn good. He is so good. And he has some of the most underrated figures of all time. Elite torso selection for him, too. They, this is a guy that they just always knocked out of the park. Elite 16, I went with The Rock. I'm just kidding, guys. I know you, you go ahead and type it out. This is actually one of my least favorite elites ever is this Rock figure. It's actually Elite 16 CM Punk. I, you, you knew it had, had to be. We just recently got the Ultimate Edition re-release, but this figure it has stood the test of time. The only con about this figure is the head sculpt wasn't the greatest of all time, but I think a lot of people do, in fact, like this head sculpt. And then the large knee pads, but outside of that, this is an iconic figure, one that has just held true throughout the entire absence of Punk before he returned to WWE. This is such a good figure, man. Such an unbelievable piece that I think everybody is always going to hold near and dear if you're a Punk fan. Elite 17 is John Cena again. I mean, the digital camo shorts, the Rise Above Hate shirt, the hat, this is a really good attire for John Cena. And the newer John Cena molds with the shorter shorts, the better shoe mold, are so good. Some of the best Elite John Cena figures you'll see. And this figure is so good. It's so good. Great head sculpt again. And it's it just stands the test of time, man. If you have this figure, you know what I'm talking about. Elite 18 is Sin Cara again, man. Sin Cara. This is probably my favorite Elite Sin Cara with the white and gold. It's just such a clean aesthetic, and you guys know I love white attires. This is such a beast of a figure. Sin Cara, you may see him again. Elite 19 has to be Kane. Elite 19 is not my favorite wave of all time, but this is probably the best iteration of that Team Hell No style Kane here. You have the iron mask. You have the sculpted <laughs> stitching on all over the figure. It's a pretty damn good figure overall, man. You have some really good stuff going on right here with this Kane and it is the best figure in Elite 19. Elite 20 is CM Punk, another really good CM Punk. Arguably, man, I think this one, I mean, I know it doesn't have a t-shirt with it, but this figure right here can stand up to the Elite 16. It's got a better head sculpt. The gear is probably on par with it, maybe not as good, but it's right up there with it. You get the WWE Championship. This is a really strong punk, one of the better punks that they've ever done. Elite 21 is Honky Tonk Man, man. Really good details here. We get the god-awful breakaway guitar, but when you put it together, it stands the test of time. Good head sculpt, good jumpsuit, really good formula. They did a really good job on Honky Tonk Man. Even though it's not the most exciting figure ever, I think it's a really good representation of him. Elite 22, I was torn between a few figures, but I did go with The Rock ultimately, and the reason I went with The Rock is because at the time, this was the best representation of a modern rock you could have until he returned and he got the new tattoo and stuff. This was the best way, and it's not the best head sculpt. It comes with a new championship it is a good wrestling rock here, especially for modern day. They, they got the torso right. They got the formula right. It was the best way you could get a modern rock for a while, and that's why he is up here. Elite 23 is John Cena again. I don't like the head sculpt, but, I mean, again, man, you get so many details. It's just a good representation of him, everything else considered, with the navy shirt and the dog tag. It's just really hard to compete with these because it's like a full uniform look, and if they didn't include the shirt or the hat or anything, obviously this figure would be a fall-off, but when you get this full look like this, it's hard to compete with. Elite 24, I went with Trish Stratus. Now, I know it has single jointed arms. It has single jointed knees, but this is such a good representation of Trish Stratus at the time. Head sculpt is great. Gear, iconic gear. You get the women's title. This is a great figure. One of the better women's figures I've ever done. If they updated this figure specifically, it would skyrocket in how good the figure is. Elite 25 has to be Sin Cara again, man. I mean, look at this gear, man. You have like this zebra print gator style gear going on with the lime green, the gold, and the white. Such an iconic gear, man. If you go back and look at these waves, there's just not... There's not many figures that compete with some of these guys. I mean, they pose around so well. There's so many details, great paint apps. It's everything you could really want out of an action figure, and that's why Sin Cara is so good. He's very toyetic. Elite 26 may be a hot take, man, but it's Jack Swagger. It's Jack Swagger. I love this Jack Swagger head sculpt. I personally think it's the best Jack Swagger head sculpt we've ever seen until maybe the jumpsuit AEW Jazzwares version. But I like the formula. I like the gear. He comes with the American flag and the Don't Tread on Me flag. Just really cool details with this figure. Even though it is a black and gray gear, that did a really good job on this piece. 
Elite 27 is debatable, but so many figures in this wave have been redone and remastered and things like that. So I went with Kofi Kingston. I think it's such an underrated piece. You get the I Can Fly shirt. You get the orange gear, which is very unique for Kofi. And he's wearing kick pads. It's just a really unique Kofi Kingston figure that really represented him well at this at this time. Elite 28, I went with Crush. I mean, it speaks for itself, man. Elite 28 is actually a really, really shish wave. It's not a good wave at all. Even the John Cena in this wave is very bad. It's, it's just not good. Probably my least favorite Cena ever is in this wave, but this figure is very good and, you know, for a lot of reasons. I think the arms are too skinny, but everything else is pretty much money. I, I love everything about it. After that, it's, it's very good representation. Elite 29 is CM Punk, man. I love the hoodie. I love the gear. It's a really good CM Punk. This is the last figure of his that we got, or the last Elite, I should say, before he left the company. But again, it stands the test of time. Really, really good. Even if you pick this up in modern day, besides it not having double jointed arms, you're going to love this figure. Elite 30 could be controversial, but I went with Batista. The amount of tattoo detail that's on this figure and everything like that, it poses around well. It's a good representation of Batista. I've always really, really liked this figure. And there are some other really, really good figures in, these, in this wave, but I personally love the Batista. Batista has some really, really good figures. Elite 31, kind of a hot take, but I went with Dean Ambrose. For whatever reason, I've always liked this figure. You guys know I don't really care for shield figures because of the legs being remolded over and over. I mean, legitimately, we have seen this Roman Reigns style legs, these shield legs, for so long that I have I am completely over it. But I really, I always like this figure. I like the U.S. title. I liked him coming with the camcorder. I just thought that was such a unique accessory. And I like this Dean Ambrose. Elite 32, I went with Cody Rhodes. I went with Cody Rhodes. So I, I really like, I've always liked this figure. I never was a big fan of the head sculpt, but it poses around so well. I always like the hoodie. And I like this figure. It, it's just really good formula. Really feel good in hand moment here for Cody. Until they crushed him with pinless joints. Elite 33, I went with X-Pac. This guy really, I felt like he shuffle armed a lot back in the day, man. He really, really did, but it's a good head sculpt. I know they reuse it a lot and stuff, but the gear is good. European title, I think that this is a good one. And Elite 33 is another real, I don't know, it's kind of a stinker of a wave overall from what I remember. Elite 34, I went with Doink, and I'm not a big Doink fan, but this figure is very, color, very colorful. And Elite 34 is a very shish wave. Overall, not a good wave at all. And this is a... Really good figure for Doink. It comes with a bucket and everything. Very colorful. And I think that this is a good one. Elite 35 may be controversial, but I went with Luke Harper. This figure is so underrated. One of the most underrated elites they have ever done. You get the crocodiles or the gators. He poses around so good. I, I love this figure so much that I still use it in fed form. It's just so good, man. It's, you don't know until you start posing this guy around. If you're a pose around guy, you're going to love this figure. It's very fun. Now, be that as it may, I do remove the jacket and I cut the shirt off and then put a cloth shirt on it. But after that, it is so good. And then if you put the Elite 66 Harper head on there, oh my god, great fix up. It's such a good figure. Elite 36 is Stardust, kind of speaks for itself. Poses around great, good paint apps, really good likeness on the head sculpt. And you get both tag titles, even if they are the worst tag titles ever. Just a lot of really cool details here with the wrist gauntlets and stuff. Elite 37 is John Cena again. I love the camo shorts on this one, even if the head sculpt's shishy. I never liked this head sculpt and stuff, but... At the end of the day, it's a good representation of Cena. I almost went with The Miz in this one. The Miz in this wave is very good. And I like the Seth Rollins in this wave. And Brock Lesnar from this wave is pretty good. And they have Dean Malenko. This, this set's pretty good overall, but given all the details and stuff, I went with Cena. Elite 38, kind of cheating here. I went with Bradshaw and Farouk simply because this wave is not very good overall. But you get APA, you get the... If you combine everything here and you have the backstage setup that they used to have, I used to love it, man. I used to love this. And so the APA... APA is, is my two representations here. I think you get them as a set here. It's just good. And I know it's technically kind of cheating because we're going two and one here, but I'm still going to take it. Hey, make your own damn figure list. Elite 39. This was kind of tough because Ziggler's in this wave. You have a Sting in this wave. But I think the best representation you have is Godfather. You have the chain. You have the really bright green gear, really good head sculpt, all the tattoo detail, really poseable. I really like the Godfather here. A really, really underrated figure that slips by people. Elite 40. Another underrated figure is Sami Zayn. Such a good representation of Sami Zayn. Great head sculpt, NXT Championship, good gear. Really, really good figure of Sami Zayn. Elite 41, I went with Lita. Just a really good figure overall. You know, again, similar to the Trish Stratus. Single jointed knees, single jointed arms, but everything else, the details that you get, the mesh shirt, you even have the paint detail. I like the little pink clips on the pants. Solid head sculpt for the time being. 
Just a good figure overall. Elite 42, I went with Kalisto. Not a very good wave overall. You had Terminator Triple H. You had the Nasty Boys. You had some good stuff there, but I think Kalisto overall was better in terms of everything considered. Elite 43 makes me vomit, but it is Alberto Del Rio. You know, I, I, I you know, Bret Hart almost won the vote here. But everything else in this wave, like the Kevin Owens from this wave is shishy. The Neidhart from this wave is very small. And I almost went with Bret Hart, but I remember, for some reason, I want to say that figure had such a loose waist for whatever reason. And I think that this represents Del Rio really, really good, even if I don't like him at all. Elite 44 is Sin Cara, man. Black, pink, and silver. I mean, what do you want? Such a good representation. He even has the wing tattoo at this juncture, but this is the best figure in Elite 44. Elite 44 is not a very good wave. It's not a very good wave, but I think that the Sin Cara wins above all else. Elite 45, you guys know, it's going to be Seth Rollins. Now, this wave is very strong as well. Really good Roman Reigns here. You have a William Regal figure that I really love. You have the Dudley Boys. You have Lex Luger. Really strong wave, but Elite 45 Rollins above all. How they haven't re-released this figure yet makes me just, it just drives me nuts. I don't know how this isn't an Ultimate Edition. Like, you gotta re-release this guy, man. Ultimate Edition Elite 45 Rollins with the WWE US Championships, the entrance vest, the Ultimate Edition formula. Oh my goodness gracious. And this guy didn't even have chest hair. Still that damn good. Elite 46 is Beast in the East Finn Balor. You guys know I don't like Daniel Bryan torso Finn Balor. But when you have a shishy wave like this, Elite 46 is god awful. I never liked Elite 46. I thought it was a terrible wave. But this figure is definitely the best figure in the set. Elite 47, I went with Asuka. So many details, man. I mean, look at this. Look at all the all the details. You have the zebra print, the paint apps, and the pink hair, and the mask. She is a beast. This figure is great, and you gotta know that these women's figures are really good if they have single jointed arms and knees. Elite 48, I went with Cactus Jack. This wave is not bad. It does have Eric Rowan in there. You know, he can't pose. The Dean Ambrose from this wave is pretty good. Dolph Ziggler in this wave is pretty good as well. Not a good gear, but I think that the Cactus Jack was the best in the set. Elite 49, we went with Enzo Amore. So many different details. I mean, look at the patterns and the cheetah print. I mean, Enzo was such a... He's so toyetic. He was so toyetic, and they did a good job on all of his figures, man. They even have, like, the mock Jordan 12 lows in here. They did a great job on, on everything here. They just did a really good job of the details on this figure. It's so it's so impressive. But one thing that's going to shock you, man, Elite Series 50 is going to be none other than Trash Corbin. I know. I can already hear you. I can hear you, you, you barking, big dog. This is an insane pick, but it's the right one. It's the right You go back and look at Elite 50, man. There's nobody else that deserves this and this is my favorite trash Corbin figure outside of the Elite 99 I think it just has the best formula from here they gave him weird formulas over and over I like the sculpts on the legs and everything this is definitely the best representation of trash but I think that it's the best pick. It's the it's the only pick you can pick, man. It's the best figure in Elite 50, and that makes me vomit. But it's, it's the way it is, man. It's the way it's the way it is. Make your own damn countdown. You know what I'm saying? But this is every single best figure from Elite Series 1 to 50. Now I do want to do the best elites from 51 through 100. And another thing I want to do is I want to I got to finish my ranking, okay, of ranking every set from worst to best between Elite Series 1 and 100. That video is just so much editing that it's ridiculous. So whenever we get those out, you got to like the videos. One thing I also would like to do is counting down the best WWE elites of all time and doing a top 100 best WWE elites of all time. And I've been doing some research. I've been compounding the interest and in trying to add it all up together here. But it is a tall task. So you guys will have to stick with me on that one. But I am, I am working on it. I'm working on doing so. So we will see how all those go, but that is, you know, I like to rank the figures, man, so we're going to do our best here, but that was every, but that was the best WWE Elite from every single series, 1 through 50. Wherever you disagree, let me know. Wherever you agree, let me know. I'd like to know, man, but I did my best. I gave, you know, all my expertise over the years, my every experience I've had with all of these figures, man, but nonetheless, man, that is going to wrap the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this down in the comment section below. Let me know what you agree with, what you di disagree with, man, but I'm getting the hell out. I hope you guys did enjoy. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. You guys are unbelievable. Thank you guys so very much for everything. Appreciate you all. I'm getting out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one. I'll catch you guys later.